Good afternoon, Seattle. Welcome back to Le Frères Heureux, a Fraser podcast with two brothers. Who would have thought it? Practically unimaginable. Yeah. We're very on theme. We're very on brand. I know. Our entire existence uh, yeah. as <laughs> brothers who enjoy Frasier. Yeah. You're the smart one. I'm the insufferable one. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I am Fraser. And I am Ewan. Yeah. How are you doing? Oh, living, living the dream. Getting, yeah, getting, getting on with there. things. Yeah. It's been a couple of weeks since we last recorded. It has. I was ill last week, unfortunately. We mm. couldn't get our normal recording session. And yeah, we could have risked it, but you had plans. And I had we didn't plans. Wanna, I didn't want to get sick. It. It's, you know? it's understandable. I was, I was seeing friends that I hadn't seen in quite a long time. And if I were to bring them something... Even if it wasn't, a even gift, if it, even if it wasn't COVID, if I was to bring them a gift of sickness, <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't um, be very happy with me. No, thankfully it wasn't COVID, yeah, but no, it, it was glad. still not pleasant. So yeah. yeah, um, but here we are back again in the booth. It's not really a booth; it's more. It's kind of a booth room. With more, it. It's more of a booth than than I've got. It's more of a booth I, than than the last place we recorded was. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it's got somewhat of a booth in it yeah <laughs> um so where did we get to last time we got to middle of season nine mm. we got we left everyone on a cliffhanger we could have pretended it was deliberately left i suppose we could have done extra yeah. couple of weeks on cliffhanger keep people hanging yeah see what happens in the middle of mother load um so we'll be kicking off back again today with disc three mother load part two um we got anything to talk about? I don't think we do. Or I don't think so. I I was planning on getting um uh, uh another highlights video done for last week in, oh, in yeah. last week, but I got it up a couple of days in advance onto YouTube with the hopes that I would preemptively get the copyright stuff dealt with before I had to upload it. Yeah. Before I had to release it, I mean, and then it's still exactly. sitting it's copyright still struck. They've not responded yet. YouTube I, need to pull their finger out they do because it's ridiculous it's it's a highlights reel it's not it is it's for review purposes i don't know how power fraser does it because he's putting them out constantly it probably put like uh put probably them out weeks in advance, way in advance way in advance deal yeah. with all the the copyright yeah we were unfortunately not prepared enough no we weren't no but it'll be up soon hopefully if it's not already out by the time this episode comes out we'll mm. see um and you can enjoy another of Ewan's fantastic highlight reels. Mm. It's quite fun actually going back I'm and watching happy them. With how they, yeah, they yeah, I out. think they're pretty good. Um, it's kind of just a bit more, uh, digestible rather than listening to a full podcast episode. Yeah, yeah. I think it's maybe a bit more appealing to some folk who want to just kind of jump on and see what we think of of the episodes. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's good. Um. Yeah, and that that's that. That's uh, we're back. We'll just hopefully stay on schedule the next yes. few weeks. <laughs> Try and get a few more in the backlog if we can get a get a couple of recording sessions in and avoid any more delays. Um, but it's going to be into the new year. Why did I think that when we first started that we would be done before the end of this year? I don't know. I don't know. I think it took a little while before we didn't plan on doing the bonus episodes. Did we not? So Maybe if we that's didn't do what the bonus is. episodes, it would have only been 44 weeks. Yeah. So that would have been a little under a year. And then with the bonus, actually, it's over a year. It's a little over a year. Yeah. So maybe it's yeah, maybe it's that. Maybe we didn't plan that. Yeah. Um. But anyway, we're, we're getting through it. Yeah. Oh, it's just, oh, yeah, what, we're more than three quarters of the way through now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's scary. Scary stuff. It is. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Um. As I said, Motherload Part 2. We were left hanging in the balance after Gertrude drops the bomb that her and uh, what's what's Daphne's dad's name called? Harry. Harry. Um, although we don't find that out till later. Yeah, I don't think we find that out until later. Um, have separated. Um, Gertrude and Simon have come to visit Daphne in America, ostensibly just for a visit, but then it turns out it's because they broke up and she was sad. Mm. <laughs> um, and Fraser is at war with his upstairs neighbour. The uh, famous Cam Winston. Good old Cam Winston. Um, and he has draped an American flag over his balcony down across Fraser's window. There's got to be some kind of like building bylaws against that, right? 
You'd think. But everyone in the building hates Frazier. That's I think true. is part yeah, of the he problem. Doesn't, he doesn't help himself. Not only is, is Cam charming enough that he can kind of convince everyone that it's yeah. fine, uh, also everyone hates Frazier I know, that's for <laughs> various reasons. So. I put a note, like, uh, I'm skipping ahead a wee bit, but yeah, like for this uh, the episode, uh, Cam's definitely my highlight um, because he's just so, he's like Frasier 2.0. Yeah. He's so like charming and likable. But still has the personality of Fraser, mm-hmm. like this, you know, arty, hoity toity, upper class, elitist. <laughs> but he's likable. He actually gets on with people. He knows how to interact with other human beings. Yeah. Fraser just doesn't doesn't have that. Um so it's yeah, it's really funny watching them go at it. Um But yeah, so we're we're we kinda kick straight off, or I think a couple of days have passed since the cliffhanger. Um, Gertrude and Simon are just continuing to overstay their welcome, and it's it's kind of just dealing with Daphne and Niles dealing with how they're gonna how they're gonna help her, I guess. Um, and by help, I mean get rid of and send back to England. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, she thinks that Daphne is a virgin and isn't staying at Niall's place and they aren't sleeping together and whatnot and that just gradually grates on her as well as the fact that Simon wants to be rid of his mother yeah he obviously sees it from the audience point of view where she's just this insufferable monster (laughs) um with zero redemption by the way she really doesn't get much of a redemption yeah there's never really uh there's like kind of one or two episodes where we get a little bit of sort of softening between her and Niles, yeah. I guess. But that's to be fair. Even in this episode, okay, there's a yeah. little bit. There's a little when bit when they're playing that's, cards. They're, they're playing cards, and it's, um, kind of, it's not playing for foot robs. Yeah, mm. <laughs> or well, antique coins. <laughs> yeah, has antique, Niles. antique coins. Um, but I think I, what's nice about this episode actually is that Simon gets a little bit of redemption. Argu well, arguably redemp arguable redemption. Yeah. It's, it's not so much redemption, I suppose it's a little bit of self awareness. Yeah, kind of acceptance yeah. of who he is. Um which isn't so bad. It's yeah, I it's don't know. It's better than it's... just him not realizing that he's doing anything wrong. I kinda like it. I think it's quite nice. Hmm. He's um Fraser's kicked him out because he was staying in Martin's Winnebago, but obviously stealing food from <laughs> Fraser's fridge and everything. Fraser kicks him out and he goes and tries to shack up with Roz and eventually gets kicked off down the drain pipe yeah but he comes back uh to the apartment and stealing stuff in the middle of the night and he and daphne have this nice little converse well have this conversation in the middle of the night where she says that she needs help and he's saying no i need to leave i need to be rid of her i need to go and do my own thing and there's this really wonderful scene like anthony lapaglia does this it's really like believable and heartfelt when he says like i'm sorry daphne I, i can't like it maybe it makes me a bad person but it's just not who i am and there's something really kind of nice about that like mm. it's horrible he's ditching his mother yeah <laughs> but she is insufferable mm-hmm. <laughs> and the fact that he's so honest about it and he's kind of like it's just i can't it's not it's not who i am it's it's i like it i think it 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 doesn't fully justify his character but it it this yeah this this little scene of acceptance coupled with the great performance is really quite nice yeah um and that's what was kind of comparing to like gertrude doesn't she never gets that humanization she's always just a bit of a monster (laughs) excuse me i just like hiccuped while i was taking a breath (laughs) oh no um fine it's all good um and yeah and that leads to the final confrontation between daphne niles and gertrude where Daphne kind of says, like, look, you are so awful that you drove your own son away, um, and now you're not even showing appreciation to us. So get out, basically. Yeah. And then she fakes a fall. She fakes an injury. <laughs> and Which the... she coasts for, what, a season and a half? Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, she definitely leans hard on that. Um, and oh, it's just... Oh. I, I, I wish they didn't do that. I really wish they didn't. It doesn't bring anything to the story. It's 
the character is just not fun yeah not pleasant and the, i can't really think of any redeemable scenes not like her as a character redeemable but just like enjoyable to watch scenes with her in it mm -hmm. i don't know i can't i can't think of any see how you feel about gertrude and i and i completely agree with you how you feel about gertrude mm -hmm. but how you feel about gertrude is exactly how i feel about pierce and community <laughs> but he's there from the very you know beginning yeah. of the show <laughs> And there are a lot. Oh, I think he's probably, not as bad. Oh, he is worse. <laughs> but, but he's there, like comically worse. Um, I don't know. I don't find it funny. So okay, well, yeah. Like I think there probably are a lot of other shows that are like that, where it's just kind of maybe it's just me being picky and not having a taste for certain characters. But I'm like, I can't. There's just one character just spoils. No, the whole, it's, it's it is difficult as well because you want you know as showrunners when you're creating a show like this, you want to keep things fresh. You want to introduce new characters you're never going to be able to find a character that everyone can agree on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes they do miss the mark completely. And maybe people do agree, but in the opposite direction, yeah. <laughs> where they all agree to hate them. Um, this, unfortunately, is one of them. So we have to, yeah, stick with it for another couple of seasons, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, the other plot comes to a, comes to a head with Cam and Fraser in front of the condo board. Mm. Fraser thinks he's got a way out of it by appealing to them um and cam just keeps pulling the the patriot card yeah <laughs> the it's the american flag we can't take down the american flag yeah how about i take it down when there's world peace <laughs> yeah there's uh, something that i hadn't thought about before but i thought about this time when i was watching it is that the the time that this episode came out is definitely very relevant i mean that's this was a good very point, very actually recently after 9-11 that's true so the whole sort of like weaponized patriotism yeah in america with the flag and stuff and like singing the national anthem just to shut people up and things like that it's a lot more is relevant. very very like realistic i mean yeah, that's, that's a lot true of people actually yeah no that. that's a really good point i never thought about that um yeah i guess that would still be very fresh at the time mm. so it's not i mean to be fair even nowadays, I think Americans are very into their oh, yeah. Yeah, patriotism, yeah, yeah. Um, for better or for worse. People would have been like that before, both before and after. I think there was, there's think still a degree of it. But it yeah, was... no, you're not wrong. That's that's yeah, that's a good point. Um, eventually, yeah, Fraser does cave. He, he gives in um, and gives Cam his parking space back in order to take down the flag. Mm. Tries to steal some credit in the... Yeah, he does. <laughs> I love that little guy at the, the condo board meeting who's just heckling Fraser the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> credit grabber. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you move to Iraq? Yes, move to if Iraq. you hate freedom too much. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's so funny how how well Cam handles like the upper having the upper hand Mm -hmm. He just he he just sails right through Fraser. He knows, he knows exactly what he's yep, doing. Yeah. Yep, it's amazing. Yeah. It's oh. like saying I'll take it down when there's world peace because he knows that yeah. Fraser is then going to say there's never going to be world peace, and then everyone's just going to turn on on him even more. It's so yeah. good. It's yeah, he's he definitely the highlight um, of this season. Actually, Cam, oh, yeah. I think he's just wonderful. Yeah, it's such a shame that we only get what an another another one more appearance after this. I think just one. I think it's only three. Because we get um, is it the love you fake? Uh, what's her name? Is it his mum's Cora. name? Cora. Cora. We, we see her again once. She more gets a couple of episodes, yeah. But Cam, yeah. I think we only have one more. I think it's one episode with the both of them, and then another episode just with <sighs> Cora. A shame. Could and have done so and much that's more. Into the next season, isn't it? Could be. Or I think that's the end of season ten. Could be, yeah, yeah. Because the love you fake's not until next think, disc. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it would be the following disc or two. Yeah. Well. What do you rank the second part of Motherload? So this one, I just, I don't give it quite as, well, actually, I think I'm going to be rating it the same as I rated the first part, which is a two, okay. um, but it's a slightly lower two. I couldn't, I still couldn't quite give it a one because I do really like Cam and I do enjoy that scene. It's just, it's frustrating that the conclusion of like the second half of the whole Fraser cam argument i don't think is as good as the first part i think you know the opening scene with Fraser and cam arguing and then when cam comes yeah. to the door and the two of them are arguing is really fun and we don't really get any more of that we kind of get the, the scene in the condo meeting with cam being manipulative is good but it's just not as good there's not quite the back and forth yeah yeah 
and then the rest of the episode is pretty much just more of Gertrude and Simon, mm-hmm. which we had last time. So, yeah, it's it's again just a two for me. That's fair. And see, I ranked it a little bit higher. Mm. I think I gave it a two as well the first part, but I, I give it three to this one. Um, I think it. <sighs> There's a couple of things that make it better for me. Um, one of them is that scene with Simon which I really love, mm-hmm. Simon and Daphne having that conversation. Um, the other is Gertrude. You okay? Yep. Hello. The other the other scene is where Daphne finally stands up to Gertrude, mm-hmm. which I think is really, it's important because we've had her under her mother's thumb for nine seasons now. Yep. We've had constant co- uh, like phone calls and her, you know, trauma from her childhood and everything so having her finally stand up and having niles be the one to kind of help her with that i think it's really important and really nice um to see and then we have cam as well the scene of the condo board and cam just one-upping fraser Mm -hmm. is just so satisfying um but i don't disagree actually to be fair the 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 back and forth of the first part with Fraser and Cam. I think I would like to see more of that. Mm-hmm. Not just in this episode, but just in general. I yeah. think you could definitely do quite a bit with that. The opening the like the episode starts where Fraser says, Oh, Cam stole my newspaper again and it's just it's not like part of the episode, but it's just this funny little ongoing yeah. feud. Which I don't I don't think we even get much of a mention no, past I don't think so. The Love You Fake next yeah. desk. I don't think we get much of a mention of him anymore. Which is a shame, but Yeah. Eagle. He took his behemoth XL and <laughs> behemoth, behemoth elsewhere, XL. elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. Well, moving on from Motherload, we've got, in my opinion, a significantly better episode up next. Juvenilia, um, referring to the antagonists of the episode. Yeah. Teen Scene, mm. uh, another radio show produced by teenagers for teenagers. Um, and Fraser is coerced somewhat to appear as a guest on the show, um, partially due to Kenny's pleading and partially due to the uh, the the head uh, what do you call presenter mm-hmm. um, manipulating Fraser. Oh yeah, <laughs> telling him exactly what he wants to hear. Um, so it's kind of like, it's just like a talk show, isn't it? It's just a sort of interview-esque like interview, yeah. talk show where these teenagers interview various people. Um, Fraser comes in expecting it to be all smiles and talking about his life and what he does. And instead it's just like an interrogation yeah. <laughs> of all the bad stuff he's done mm-hmm. <laughs> in his life um, and how he treats his patients and things like that. It's 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 pretty brutal, oh, to it be is. honest. Absolutely. They they dig up some quite dramatic stuff they from Fraser's do. past. The whole like, is it true that you th- when your was it when your wife threatened to leave you that you stood on a ledge for <laughs> several hours, which is something we've heard before. Yeah, and did, to a degree that actually happened in Cheers. It does actually happen. It in does Cheers. happen. I don't Cheers. know how much of it you see, but it does happen in Cheers. Yeah. they do go into the this this the um. Yeah, I think it's in the, in uh, Beloved Infidel they talk about it. It was like a, a French scientist oh, the, yeah, living yeah. in a biodome or whatever. Yeah. And I think they do actually sort of set that up and then they reveal that Lilith had slept with him and then Fraser leaves. Has a bit of a breakdown. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's funny that they keep bringing things up like that. Yeah. I mean, it's not funny, but it's no. like, it's it's interesting <laughs> yeah. that they have, they obviously have that on hand and they're referring to his actual scripted history not just like making things up um but yeah they sort of uh question his legitimacy as a psychiatrist as well Mm -hmm. which clearly winds him up a lot yeah um you know saying that when he has a caller that he can't help in the allotted time he just passes them on to another psychiatrist Mm -hmm. which i think is a legitimate criticism yeah this is actually one of the things that i my opinion has changed a lot about this episode. I used to really not like this episode because mm-hmm. I got frustrated that it's like they're just being so horrible to him. Yeah. But then I'm watching it now and I'm thinking, you know what? They're actually really quite... They're, they're holding him to very... account. Yeah, they are. They're saying like, you're spending two minutes. Like, how much can you really be helping people in two minutes? Mm-hmm. 
you know if it's a difficult problem you're passing it on to someone else if it's not a difficult problem then do they really need to be calling a psychiatrist yeah. in the first place you know if if a problem can be solved in two minutes are you really working that hard um i think definitely fair criticisms yeah yeah they d- I, I definitely bring up his personal stuff i don't agree with i think yeah. that's too far and they're definitely seen they're they're meant to be the villains of the mm-hmm. episode the way that they treat uh was andy what's his name andy ziff yeah zip can't remember his name andy something Mm -hmm. uh the producer of the show who's just like (laughs) done he's just so depressed it's just like miserable plugging the fact that there's still applications are still (laughs) open for the mediator job part way through the production i love it he's one of my favorite like he is just very one not one scene but you know one-off characters he's just right before the interview starts and he says like no matter what happens i'm on your side yeah. and Fraser does take it up taken aback doesn't yeah. realize what's going on yeah, um i love him yeah, he's very funny um but yeah we have a savior in our midst mm-hmm. to prevent Fraser's career going completely off the rails the wonderful kirby um who's still working at kcl as the intern and as useless as ever but he actually went to school with the teen scene folk and halfway through the 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 interview is able to dig up some dirt um on the on the presenters and pass that along to Fraser who who, who uses it to uh get his own back on them mm-hmm. was it the the girls met someone at math camp and oh no the guy met someone at math camp yeah she wrote a poem for someone else yeah uh and then yeah they kind of move on quickly and start asking nicer questions <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah he just totally blackmails them yeah i, I love that I, I i love that kirby's the kind of guy who has your back mm-hmm. as no matter yeah. how useless he is yeah he's the kind of guy who's got your back he's i love he's that clearly good at something yeah for once and it's, <laughs> and it's blackmail <laughs> i had some friends who let's just say got held back <laughs> um yeah, I I love it. I I really love the f- the final scene with the two of them as well. Mm-hmm. Um, because Fra- what is it, Fraser? Earlier on in the episode, when he's talking to the presenter girl, mm-hmm. he says, "Um, perhaps afterwards I could take you and your your friends out for a cheeseburger or some such." Yeah. And then the end of the episode, after Fraser's got his own back, he and Kirby are walking out the studio, and Kirby says, "Perhaps I could treat you to a cheeseburger or some such." It's like, yeah, I'd like that a lot, Kirby. And I really love that scene. It's something so, so nice about it. Yeah. That Fraser's kind of gotten over the fact that he d- disliked him and saw him as a bit useless. And now they're like friends. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I really love it. I love it a lot. I love Kirby. I love that scene. Yeah. I think it's great. Um, and what else we've got in this episode? We've got Martin and Peg. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's from work. One. It's it's not a particularly interesting B plot. No, it's it not does, one I especially enjoy. Yeah, it kind of ties into the following episode. Yeah, v- it does. It's kind of, um, but doesn't lead anywhere. Martin's kissed a a fellow colleague at a work party, mm-hmm. and Daphne and Niles are teasing him for it. So he decides to go and ask. Uh, no, he's waiting for her to ask him out, and when she doesn't call, he gets a bit obsessed yeah over he's it. he's not talking to her because he's convinced that she's going to be a typical woman and she's going to get her yeah. you know too involved and then he winds up doing the exact same thing it's just kind of i mean i like that they're sort of pulling a they're pulling the old switcheroo mm-hmm. on the um like the cliche of oh the woman's gonna not enjoy just having a casual bit of fun yeah and it's gonna ha- she's gonna take it too seriously and then they spin it with martin doing the same thing but it's still just playing off of a kind of boring cliche it's that we've probably a, just yeah, seen it's countless like, times already it's not really that interesting um yeah it doesn't it doesn't really lead anywhere and to be honest i think that kind of brings the episode down a bit for me whoops who's got their phone ringer on not me it's well it's not me it, i've had my phone on do not disturb for about three years <laughs> <laughs> um yeah this i think this kind of brings the episode down for me the, the b plot a bit yeah the, the, it, it's yeah the b plot's not very interesting yeah so unfortunately whilst it would have been a five if we'd had a bit 
more of an interesting B plot, mm. or even if the A plot had been like exceptionally good, yeah, I may be giving it a five, but I, I had to settle for a four mm-hmm. on this one, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, I give it a three. Okay, um, because I did, I, 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 I mean. If you had asked me a year ago, I probably would have given it a one. Okay. I didn't like this episode at all. Okay. But I think it's rewatching everything from the start and starting to see it as like Frasier is the antagonist <laughs> yeah. of the show. <laughs> and then, you know, an episode like this, you don't feel as bad for him when he's getting, you know, you're looking at it a, bit, a little bit more rationally when he's getting criticized. And um, it makes me enjoy the episode a lot more. And I can see yeah. the kind of the funny bits rather than just thinking, oh, it's just cringy and not enjoying it yeah which is why we're doing this which is exactly what which we're is doing why it, we're doing this refresh our opinions and yeah look exactly. at things critically and exactly yeah so it's a three i think it's okay a, no, that's fair I, I don't think there's anything in it that i particularly enjoy but it's still pretty solid yeah yeah good is it this episode we've got a pretty good guest caller we do have a pretty good yes. guest caller freddie prince jr oh, what a guy. the wonderful freddie prince jr what a guy um who was in i know what you did last summer not long before this. I mean, this would have only been a few years after. We all know what we know him from. Scooby-Doo. <laughs> years in Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and being married to Sarah Michelle Gellar. Yeah. The lucky bastard. I know. Um, Did he not have... He had a big part in Friends, did he not, as well? Was that not what he was known for for a he while? He had... Uh, he was in an episode. He, was had, just a guest, a guest he had a guest spot. What, a guest spot, which has been kind of looked down well, it's one of the reasons that people look back on the show as not being particularly funny really he played a nanny um, oh, okay. and there's a lot of quite homophobic language being ah, used okay. or like quite homophobic and quite sexist where they're kind of saying like oh but it's weird that a man has a job where he cares about children yeah and they're kind of saying like oh well, he's got to be gay and then they kind of make jokes about like oh but it's a man being a nanny is kind of like a woman being uh and it like it's sort of yeah it's a bit dicey it's, it's definitely very dicey and they kind of try and play it that these are bad opinions to have but they also do a lot of just building up on these jokes without really saying anything no, interesting that's a shit. so yeah i didn't I, I knew he was a guest i didn't he know is, what yeah, the context a, was at all so. little, little guest spot there yeah um but yeah i know what you did last summer was not long before this and then scooby-doo would have been pretty shortly that's afterward probably his biggest roles you know the Scooby Doo, the live action Scooby Doo films are really good. They're so good, man. They really are. They're honest. They're ridiculous. Oh yeah, and they're so silly. Mm-hmm. But the cast is impeccable. The cast spotless. Like just, you can't fantastic. find fault. You just can't. Mm-hmm. Um, we should do a Scooby Doo podcast. <laughs> I mean, they're kind of horror movies. If we do a horror movie podcast, we can talk about <laughs> Scooby Doo. <laughs> we can kind of talk about Scooby Doo. We do a kids kids horror episode kids horror episode scooby-doo one i don't two. know if i would want to talk about the live action one or if i'd want to talk about witch's ghost because scooby-doo and the witch's ghost zombie is... island zombie island also is good that still gives me nightmares man uh, yeah that is scary with the like the cat women <sighs> yeah we're not talking about scooby-doo no let's get back on top <laughs> yeah here. so yeah Fre- freddie Fre- prince Fre- jr was mike they kind of i think i'm guessing it's just like a wank joke is that <laughs> a... oh when he he, he calls <laughs> in and, right. and says like um you you hear fraser's advice you don't really hear the setup yeah. but he kind of says like there's nothing wrong with it you're not gonna get sick but the more you do it the less special it becomes yeah and he kind of goes okay dr craig thank you and hangs up um yeah which is quite funny poor mike and i guess it's i guess that's good advice i guess fair. <laughs> it's fair enough yeah fair enough <laughs> okay um i don't you need to keep on top of the guest callers because yeah. i don't have a note but there's i knew no there was one. i knew he was in this one there's one um, more actually yeah very few guest callers there's a few in-person a few good guests. guest stars there's a yeah. there is a guest caller in the last episode last we'll episode okay remember that we'll cool moving on to the proposal which is unsurprisingly about a proposal, um, namely Niles to Daphne. Mm. Which, yeah, total shocker there. Who knew that was going to happen at some point? Yeah. Um, they've obviously been dating for a year and a half now, but given the situation that they're both in for the last nine years, yeah, it's not surprising that they've kind of they're moving forward with the relationship quite quickly. Um. So we start with Fraser and Niles buying the ring. There's t- talking of sort of poorly aged gay jokes. Yeah. The start of the episode's a wee bit 
uh, I don't know. It it did. It's not. There's nothing particularly like offensive about it, but it just yeah. feels a little bit dated in yeah. the humor. Definitely. Like, there's not really a joke to it. It's so just, much as it's yeah. just. Oh, he thinks they're gay. It, that's funny. That's it. It's yeah. Like, there's no, yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. nothing really that clever about it. It's a bit... the the jeweler, yeah, it sort of assumes that Fraser and Niles are buying the rings for each other, mm-hmm. um, and Martin's getting very embarrassed about it, and it's everyone's cheering when Niles tries the ring on, yeah, and it's uh, it's yeah, it's just not it's not funny no. for one, but two, it's just kind of yeah, as you say, it's kind of the there's no real punchline to the joke. It's just oh, he he thinks they're gay, but they're not. Yep, and that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah I, I, whatever um so martin needs to be out of the he well Mar- martin needs to get gertrude out of the apartment fraser and niles kind of get him drunk and convince him to take her out for a date mm. um which is actually quite a, it's quite a nice scene the three of them trying the wine the three of them drinking the wine together is a fun scene yeah. for proposal um and martin getting slowly more drunk trying to what what is their test getting him to pronounce claire what you do bukowski <laughs> bukowski yeah um and if he still can pronounce it flawlessly then he's not drunk enough um but then he's kind of, he's he's quite nice about it he's kind of like when they do finally ask him he says like oh is this what all the drinks was for like you didn't need to do that like for you i'll i'll do it you mm. know which is kind of nice that even though he detests gertrude yeah he'd still do it for for niles and presumably fraser as well but fraser's lonely yeah <laughs> fraser is lonely um we have a whole episode about how lonely fraser we do is actually a couple, a couple of couple times, times this time yeah um so yeah martin takes gertrude out which is sort of like kind of b plot and that's where peg comes back in they're out on a is it just the ferry? Because Seattle has a few ferries, does it not? Yeah, they've got little islands. So it's I I assumed it was just a local thing. It wasn't like a sort of trip anywhere further no, out. Maybe like a river cruise type. Thing. Oh yeah, you I guess stuff like that. Um, but she he goes out with Gertrude and Peg and her friend happen to be on the same boat, and she's going to ask him out or go and go and talk to him. But Martin <laughs> inconveniently times his. Uh, his pushback on Gertrude mm-hmm. at that point, claiming that he, what, which one is this? Isn't the one that he gets kicked by a sheep, is it? That's Joel. Oh yeah, Joel said Joel that and he Daphne got kicked by a sheep. What is it he says? It's, well, he says that when he got shot. Oh, is it just, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's just fragments of the bullet drifted south. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> she keeps kind of alluding to things it's like, but surely you can still nope. But what about if you nope? <laughs> What about nope? <laughs> <laughs> they um, make a pill now that nope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, which yeah, it it, it it's kind of nice that Martin's willing to endure that, but it's also kind of annoying that they write off Peg as a potential romantic interest so quickly. Mm. It's something they do so often. Like how how many times I can count on one hand the amount of times the show has had a. Uh, a, a non recurring character relationship that's lasted more than one episode mm-hmm. who have we had like fraser had sam yeah martin had sherry i guess she may be a recurring character i guess i'm trying to think even Maybe it's just Sam. I don't know. Uh, I mean, yeah, at a certain point, if you're going to have them for more than one episode, you kind of need to give them a lot more screen time, like like I, you, like I you did guess. with Sherry or like someone like Mel or yeah. I mean, getting to, towards the final season, someone like Ronnie, who obviously but, yeah, gets a lot gets a lot more screen that's true, time. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just wish there was like, the kind of cast. follow through on on these kind of episodes. Yeah, which is a criticism that I've got of of three blind dates coming up mm-hmm. is that there's no real follow-through on these it would have been nice if it was just a bit more but ugh, what can you do um so that doesn't go anywhere but back to the main plot niles has has planned this very elaborate very lavish proposal he's hired wolfgang puck mm-hmm. who i did not appreciate at the time when first watching this when first watching the series who he was or what yeah. his relevance was i thought it was just a chef mm-hmm. but obviously he's 
particularly famous um and it is him yeah playing himself um i wonder how much he charged oh i don't know not not like to act but yeah like, like charged like niles to to to, to burn some crab meal. cakes oh yeah <laughs> um, um yeah i got presumably a ridiculous amount yeah i mean the guy's got like shops i mean there's like there's, there was a wolfgang puck express oh there's like got, kind like, of like fast little like fast yeah, food yeah. chain like all across the u.s so, Michelin star restaurants probably oh yeah he's well, got like, you'll have you know, like big countless. fancy restaurants as well as like little places jeez breaking the bank on bringing him in yeah um but yeah he's got like what well, he's got like uh like s- small people dressed up in mm-hmm. uh angel and angel outfits and he's got like trumpeteers and yeah cellists like a small quartet and a choir and everything and it's all so elaborate and it all it, it looks too elaborate oh it's in my definitely opinion definitely too elaborate it's so over the top and fraser's brought in doves and there's doves there's as well dove, yeah, yeah there's at least a dove um, um it's just it's just ridiculous um but thankfully the plan is kind of thrown into the air when daphne shows up and is ill hmm. she's not feeling very well has the flu all stuffed up can't eat anything tasty can't smell or hear properly so she just wants to sit by the fire and, and cuddle up um and it gives us actually one of the, the best scenes of the show in my opinion mm-hmm. where niles is he has all these great plans but when he just sits down with daphne in front of the fire he he just realizes no i don't need all this i just need her and does this great little proposal yeah gives her the ring and then they just they just cuddle up by the fire and yeah that's great little silent uh physical comedy in the background with fraser tackling the trumpeteer who yeah, hasn't, they got, yeah yeah he hasn't managed to get out of the apartment yet dressed as like a medieval minstrel He's, yeah with a really <laughs> he has like a minstrel trumpet. Trumpet, yeah, isn't it? is yeah. there a name for those really long trumpets there must be there must be that uh, they usually have like flat i don't think he has one but it's like they usually have like the flags they're the flag yeah yeah, yeah. i wonder what they're called i need to look that up there um <laughs> yeah it's it's all it's all very ridiculous but it's it's really nice i really love that ending it's really nice um Mm -hmm. and i think it kind of it 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 very aptly summarizes what a lot of the situations in the show should be yeah where fraser and niles in particular plan all these elaborate things they go to such great lengths to do things when it's just it could be so much simpler yeah they just overcomplicate everything um in their lives and i think niles niles's acceptance of that and his very simple proposal is really lovely. Um, I really like it. That's just, it's, yeah, it's just a really sweet scene. Mm. Gives me, gives me the the old welling in the eyes. Yeah, tear up a little bit. How did you rank the proposal? So I gave a three. Middle of the road. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, I don't think it's. Fan- I don't think it's as good as it should be. Yeah, I mean, with Niles and Daphne being the, you know, the big will they won't they couple for a long time, and now they're like the kind of romantic focus, mm-hmm. really. Like we're getting so much more sort of Daphne Niles episodes than we are like Fraser. Mm-hmm. Like you know, there's no need for episodes with like Fraser and um, Sam, for example, like that little two parter where she, yeah. he's kind of got these like you know shorter relationships that we see a couple of episodes of there's no need for something like that because if we want to do something about relationships we've now got daphne and niles yeah that's true so them getting married should really be more impactful but it's not it feels like daphne's barely in the episode which is weird Mm -hmm. they spend a good chunk of the episode with martin and gertrude Mm -hmm. it's not that much maybe I don't know, like a quarter of the runtime of the episode, yeah. about five minutes. But it still feels like a lot. I mean, I was thinking of something like Daphne Returns, where you've got all these like flashbacks to the kind of important yeah, points that's in their true, actually, relationship, yeah. like before they got together. And seeing something like that, more of a more of a special episode, in quotes, would be nice. Maybe even a two parter. Did they need to give a two parter to Motherload? Maybe they could have given a two-parter to the proposal instead. I suppose you could. Have I think just it works two, well as a single episode, but I also think you're right. I think yeah, when you compare yeah. it to something like Daphne Returns, 
that does feel a lot more like a a, a focus on their relationship. Yeah. Here it's more it's more typical Fraser farce with mm-hmm. the everything going wrong and the 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 planning and organizing and everything and yeah. It, yeah, it doesn't feel as focused on on the two of them as it should. I always thought it was very weird that the first that we hear of Niles planning on proposing is the episode opens with them walking into a jewelry shop to buy a ring and they kind of just go oh i can't believe we're already here buying an engagement ring for daphne and that's it that's the setup of daphne niles is going to propose to daphne after eight and a half years see i don't know if i necessarily disagree no i i mean if i necessarily agree with you Mm -hmm. if i disagree with that decision yeah because i think it does feel like this is a natural progression i don't think it it really feels like it needs to be something that needs to be brought up beforehand. Yeah. Because as soon as they got together, as soon as Mel was out of the way, we kind of knew... You knew that it was going to... It was going to happen. Yeah. So I don't know if there was any need to do this any great, this great build-up or anything. I guess you could have, perhaps, had an episode in the middle of the season to do with this and then had like the finale of the season focus on the proposal itself mm-hmm. and something a bit more a bit more special yeah but i don't know i i don't hate it um but yeah the episode itself isn't isn't great when you compare it to others it's kind of i i gave it a three as well just very middle of the road it's got some funny bits um wolfgang puck's great um yeah. all the yeah the over the top and the scene, the scene where they're tasting the wine as well, I really like. I love Martin getting drunk. I think yeah. it's really funny. <laughs> um, but other than that, it kind of the rest of it lets it down a little bit. It is a wee bit, yeah, a wee bit less special than it it deserves, perhaps. Mm. Unfortunately. Oh well. The next episode. Now. Very interesting. This is, could be a contentious one. That's definitely. We discussed this last episode, a couple it, episodes ago. I think it was ago. start of season nine. Yeah. So we have been discussing what would happen Yeah. in the instance that one of us gives an episode a one mm-hmm. and the other gives a five and how we would reconcile that yeah. going forward. So... With that being said, mm-hmm. we have Wheels of Fortune. Yep. Um, an episode that you love. It's one of my favorite episodes of the whole show. Yep. Um, and I do not like it. No. At all. No. So I wow. would like to discuss it first. Yeah. And then and we'll get into it. See what our ratings are. Yeah. Do you want to take this one? You you sure are the bigger fan sure i'll let you go through this one um so the episode opens at kacl um if i remember correctly opens at kacl and Roz warns fraser that he's gotten a message from a mm. blaine sternin yeah which to which fraser recoils in fear he's <laughs> <Yes>. horrified <laughs> at the idea that blaine sternin is is back in town trying to contact him and we find out that this is the black sheep of Lilith's family, mm-hmm. um, who is a dangerous con artist and criminal. He is a um, a smooth talker and a philanderer and a, a grifter. Thief, a grifter. Um, there's a line right at the beginning when he's describing Blaine to Roz. And he says, charm is the viscous grease with which he oils his flim flam machine. <laughs> and that's just i love it i love it so much it's so funny um and fraser he goes on and on i i have never forgiven him he once stole my antique salt server Mm -hmm. um and he decides he's not going to contact him and he he goes uh goes back to the apartment on his way and then finds waiting there for him a package from blaine sternin Mm -hmm. which contains a letter that says i'm sorry i hope this makes up to you i i want to apologize for everything i've done and inside there's the antique salt server mm-hmm. and it's a whole thing and then turns out that they get a call they get a call from the the doorman blaine is on his way up 
he's on his way up to the apartment and Fraser says like right that's it I don't care if he's apologizing I'm kicking him out of here I'm not having him in my house and then he opens the door and there is Blaine Stern in wheelchair bound mm -hmm. which I mean we've never met him before but this is a obviously a new development he's in a wheelchair played by the incredible as always Michael Keaton <laughs> the one and only I absolutely love Michael Keaton especially in this and he's fantastic in this episode um and he he comes in and he says he had a car crash he had a car accident he was driving drunk and he has found god and he wants to right all of his wrongs he wants to make it up to fraser he wants fraser to come and pray with him and it's just it's wonderful and then it escalates because of course fraser absolutely does not believe him mm -hmm. martin starts to is skeptical as always niles is kind of taking fraser's side but also is he trying kind of to starts to trying to see well, his best yeah. especially because daphne is completely trusting of him mm -hmm. and kind of from the get-go says like this is a man who's clearly just trying to better himself and trying to be better regardless of what he's done you should forgive him and whatever and it just yeah it pretty much goes on from there as that fraser doesn't trust Fra him yeah. fraser doesn't trust blaine everyone else kind of starts to to warm to him a bit and then daphne gives him money mm -hmm. so that he can afford the room hire while he, he's preaching and some place some like a hotel near i thought yeah near the, so he says somewhere near the airport some kind of conference room something near yeah. the airport um and then they all go down there Fraser's been trying to contact the doctor to get that uh, supposedly performed uh, the operation on yeah. on Blaine, and um, he's trying to get proof that Blaine's lying still. And then they they all go down to watch him do his. They go down to watch him preach, and he's Fraser starts shouting at everybody. He goes up on stage and he pushes him out of the wheelchair, oh, God. and then that as he's on the floor shouting at everyone trying to help him up his phone rings and it's dr dr kagan or dr K kagan, something yeah, i, think, I it, can't remember yeah. what um and he it has finally gotten the proof that he was not looking forward to receiving that he is actually paraplegic <laughs> he, is, he did yeah. have a car crash he has found god um and fraser at that point thinks okay well now i need to help him up i'm gonna i'm personally going to double all donations i'm gonna do everything he then needs to pull out all the stops to make up to blaine for not for not trusting him and then right at the end as soon as blaine is out the door again with fraser's antique salt server this time as a gift um he finds out that he's been feeding some lies to martin about what he's been up to he's repeated something that fraser has said earlier about you know, oh, if, if you were trying to redeem yourself, you'd be... What does he say? Like, feeding the homeless? Feeding the homeless or... and working in soup kitchens and... Going to Galapagos. Going to the Galapagos to clean oil off of yeah. sea turtles or whatever. And then Martin repeats that to Fraser, and that's when Fraser realizes that he really was lying. Yeah. And he runs to the door, and he opens the door, and there's an empty wheelchair in the hallway, <laughs> and he screams. And yeah. that's the end of the episode. And I love this episode from start to finish really? because it's abs it's carried so well by michael keaton because he's just he's a fantastic guest star the character is incredible i know that we disagreed right in our very first episode we disagreed about the crucible because i love um philip hayson oh, the, 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 yeah. the con artist gallery owner who tricks fraser with the yeah painting and i think it's just maybe it's just me and like con artists there's just something about like a con artist that i just love i think they're just such great villains because they're like they're not in a way they're not even doing anything that that evil especially if they're targeting rich people it's like you've kind of got that coming if you manage to go to someone like fraser and get him to part with some of his money you're not really doing anything wrong are you i don't know i You've I got just, all the charm of a villain, but without actually doing anything morally <laughs> reprehensible. It's it's the principle of the matter, mm. right? There's something about people without morals yeah. that really bug me. Mm -hmm. There's something about these characters that just that that bully people, that take advantage of people, that have no empathy, that I just I cannot enjoy 
at all because I detest them so much. Um, and it's just like, just, oh, just be kind to people. <laughs> Stop taking advantage of others. Um, and it's this episode. That is, it just oh, it annoys me to no end how Fraser gives in. He's yeah. he's always the one to be taken advantage of, right? Mm-hmm. With Philip Hayson, yeah. with uh, well, there's art in the next episode actually gets taken advantage of as well, mm-hmm. sort of. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, with whatever. With, um, what, what's what's his well. name? That Martin's friend that he plays poker with that turns out to be the ex Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy the ex um, con. Yeah, clearly doesn't know what he's on about there. And it's just it for the first episode, possibly ever, at least in a while. Fraser is right from the start. Mm-hmm. He goes with his gut. He thinks that Blaine is still evil, still conning, still grifting, and he tries his absolute darndest. <laughs> to convince everyone around him and then finally he gives in and he gets screwed over yep and it just irritates me to uh-huh. no end that no one listens to listens to him mm-hmm. especially daphne that she's just so quick to give money away to this guy yeah um it's ah uh, uh, i just can't <laughs> oh it's so infuriating to watch because you know as the audience you know yeah. you know what he's up to mm-hmm. you know he's full of it and yet you have to suffer through the whole episode knowing that he's about to screw these people over i just oh, i can't it's just not funny no, do not enjoy it i just don't enjoy it i love it I so love it, man is it a full five for it's you? It's a five for me. This this episode is a five for me. I just think it's it's so fantastic. Okay. It, it, there are so many lines that are so funny. I think it's like it is it is Michael Keaton's performance a lot of the time. It's like when he's when he's up and he's preaching and he's going the full like kind of Southern Baptist preacher. Yeah. And just really giving it his all. There's a a bit when Fraser bets him. Twenty dollars that he can't name all of the disciples, the disciples. Uh, yeah, and he just off the top of his head just rattles them off. Yeah. He kind of says like, first of all, I don't appreciate that you don't trust me, and second of all, and then just like rattles them yeah. all off um, during dinner, which is just really funny. Pass the potatoes, yeah. please. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just so charming and so and so wonderful. And yeah, yeah, this is a five. Well. It's for that exact reason of Michael Keaton that I could not bring myself to give it a one. Really? I oh, couldn't. Oh. I couldn't. I gave it a two. Very dramatic. Yeah, I thought I would build up the tension. You build up the tension, Sorry. thinking that it's going to be a one. It five. was going to be. To yeah. be fair, I I've always disliked this episode, and it's it's not changed that much. But rewatching it and how good a job Michael Keaton does of mm-hmm. being just a total dick, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is brilliant. And yeah. I, yeah, there's some really good lines in it. The 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 one where he names the disciples is one of my favorites. I love that line. It's mm-hmm. just so funny and so like off the cuff, like just man, just to totally put Fraser in his place. But the other one is <laughs> when Fraser phones Lilith. Yeah. And <laughs> He's like, well, what? Yeah, Martin says, like, well, why don't you phone Lilith and find out if he actually is paralyzed or not? Um, and he says, that's a good idea. I'll do that. Goes and phones Lilith, um, and <laughs> Martin says to him after he comes back, like, so, so, what does she say? Is is he really paralyzed? And uh, what, what, what did she say? Is he really paralyzed? Fraser says, she doesn't know, but she hopes so. <laughs> yeah or something to that effect Mm -hmm. and i just really loved like the bluntness and you can imagine you can picture bb newworth on the other end of the phone delivering that as well um so i really love that so it has a few redeeming qualities Mm -hmm. mostly mostly from michael keaton um and i mean he's a pretty big name yeah to get as a guest star on the show like not that the other guest stars we've had aren't Mm -hmm. but he's particularly yeah, I mean, this big, is, this especially is, in... it's not, it's not even like this was recently after he'd gotten big. I mean, he'd no. done this was over ten years since he'd done Beetlejuice and the two Batman films he was yeah. in, and yeah, 
lot of other things. Though. A lot of other things. He was in a film with B.B. Newworth. I think that was not long before this. Really? In the kind of mid to late nineties. Yeah, I mean, it's a. It must have been. It must have been a huge boon. Mm, yeah. <laughs> to the show to get someone like Michael Keaton on, but. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Sorry, I couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to go a one. I thought it's. It. Yeah. As much as I hate it, it's just it's not quite that bad. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sorry for drumming up all that artificial <laughs> tension. No, it's a shame. I'm still. I'm. I think this is probably the closest that we would have gotten to getting yeah. a one on a five. I don't know if there's any other episodes. There probably are plenty of other episodes that I'm going to give ones to, but I don't. I think you're a bit. Yeah, you're maybe a wee bit, wee bit more critical than me when it comes to the ones. See, if this had been a one and a five, it would have been really surprising that you were the one to give, give it a, a one. one and I was the one to yeah. give it a five. Because I think, especially at this point in the show, I'm a lot more critical. I don't think there's many fives from here on out, it's to be totally honest. It's funny that the biggest difference that we've had have been, was it Dr. Nora as well? Oh, that's I gave true. a one Dr. of you Nora before, was the other and then one, this yeah. one, and you've—it's it's both like it's the evil same. character. I love a—I love a villain. <laughs> I like—I can totally, I can totally get behind a villain that's if they're played well. And see, I think it's like someone like Gertrude or someone like we were talking about, like Pierce and Community. Mm-hmm. I hate characters like that where they're totally horrible and antagonistic and terrible. If they're supposed to be. They're not necessarily supposed to be protagonists, but they're like, they're supposed to be friends or family of the protagonist. They don't take a fully villainous role. If you get someone in who does a great yeah. performance and is like very distinctly like they are going against what everyone else wants, I'm going to love them. I'm gonna. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Wheels of Fortune out of the way. I'm glad we managed to dodge that bullet. (laughs) Yeah. Moving on to three blind dates. Yeah, Fraser's feeling a bit lonely. He's, uh, or seems seems to be a bit lonely. Yeah, judging by the uh, the other characters are are judging on his behalf. Mm. Um, Niles, Roz, and Daphne, after inviting Roz to be maid of honor. Um, notice that Fraser's been a bit out of sorts and whatnot, and decide to try and set him up on on a couple of different blind dates. So, now what's the first one? The first one's Niles. Yeah. Um, Niles' choice. Lisa. Lisa from the bookstore. Um, book owner, I should say. Yeah, the, the owner of the bookstore. Book owner, not just a book owner. I mean, book owner. <laughs> lots of people aren't, are book aren't owners. We all? Um she's uh yeah she'd she'd be perfect for him and blah 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 but she's a patient of niles so he can't directly get and get her in touch with him they need to do it all sly like which really they shouldn't Hmm. even if it is like a coincidence that they bump into each other remember the whole deal they had with regan yeah how she was a patient as well and niles is all funny about that even though they met each other freely was that that a, a yeah yeah that was a current patient i think they do they do say that lisa's a former patient oh, which former. Might, be, okay. might make it slightly different uh, i guess yeah i suppose yeah so they go down to the bookshop and yeah try to niles takes him and they, they try to bump into lisa by accident well get fraser to bump into her um and it just keeps going wrong they keep, they keep, she keeps going into the different aisles and fraser keeps missing her and turning his back and when he finally goes up to the the cashier to pay, he gets someone else instead. This sort of belligerent stickler to the rules, kind of incompetent. Who won't? Uh, well, 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 I think he, there, there is a. He's following the rules. There's, yeah, that's I suppose all. that. Yeah, he's not necessarily doing a bad job. He's just doing something that's frustrating Fraser. Yeah. But it's the, when the, that character is introduced, and Fraser says, "Like, oh, do you do you have a book on the Plantagenets?" And he says, "That's like a banana, right?" Oh yeah. <laughs> I think that's really really funny. That's, yeah. I don't really know what a Plantagenet is or I've what the Plantagenets no are. I'm guessing he's thinking of plantains when he says that's I, like yeah, a banana. Yeah, yeah. He's thinking of plantains, but I don't actually know what the Plantagenets Planet, are. Like, some british colony somewhere i'm guessing possibly in the context possibly. But i don't actually know like did you find everything you're looking for no not really okay <laughs> <laughs> that, i think he's great i think he's really funny he the cashier funny. um and then yeah that leads to a bit of an argument and when 
when the cashier calls Lisa over to, to deal with Fraser, Niles kind of rushes him out so he doesn't get caught. So that's date one down. Didn't work out. Date two, we've got the wonderful Alison Jenny, who has returned, being a, a former guest caller. Yeah, earlier this season. Earlier this season. Um, I think she's really great here. I think she she's she is my favorite of the three dates. This is yeah. Um, this this segment is is in my opinion the best bit of the episode. Yeah. Um, I think she's really really funny. She comes in. She she and Roz are coming over for a glass of wine and a chat and whatnot. She seems to hit off with Fraser mm -hmm. pretty well to start off with. She knows her wine. She knows her art, um, and it's not until they start talking about the artwork that Fraser bought from uh, Locklear. Somebody Locklear? Yeah. Did I write the name down? I think so. Benjamin Locklear. Is that um, a real person? I don't know. I don't know anything about I art. I don't think so. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, Benjamin, if you're, sorry, yeah. if, if you're real. Sorry, buddy. Um, he bought this uh, this great piece of art, and he's he's planning on displaying it and whatnot, and shows it to her. She's brought her art portfolio along, mm -hmm. and she's like, "This is this is my work, like this is mine. I did this." Yeah, <laughs> and Fraser gets quite defensive, and quite like, "Well, it, it can't be your work. It's, it's his work." And she's like, "No, look at this. It, like, it that's my work. He copied my work. He's he's a he's a fraud. Everyone in the art community knows it." And that kind of sets Fraser off that this assumption that he's not, yeah, he's not clever enough to know that he's a fraud. Which is really frustrating because clearly this guy is a fraud, did steal it, mm -hmm. and Fraser should just be like, "Oh, oh dear, yeah, sorry about that." But, but he doesn't. Yeah, he, he just digs this, this hole, insults her, mm -hmm. she insults him back, and then the day ends. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> Rose comes in. And it's like, is everything okay? Yeah, <laughs> it's like no, it's it's not okay. But I think someone like Alice and Janney, I think, would be a really great, like, guest role as mm -hmm. Fraser's, like, love interest. Yeah, like a recurring, recurring guest role. Um, unfortunately, we only get her for that one scene. But yeah, I don't know. They just seem to hit it off quite nicely. But it, it just it all gets yeah thrown away for the sake of Fraser's pride. Mm -hmm. As so many things do. She knows how to make a key lime pie. She knows how to make a key lime pie. What is key lime? Well, it's a kind of lime. Oh. Key limes are a kind of lime. Are they sweet? I think they're slight. Yeah, I think they're less tart. You don't really, say, you don't really get them here. Because I want to say, I imagine a lime pie would be very like bitter. <laughs> yeah, well, it's kind of similar to like a lemon meringue pie. You've got like a. I guess you've got like a, it with the sugar, kind of meringue bit that. Yeah, kind of balances it. But yeah, I think key limes are like key, like the Florida keys. I think that's kind of where they come from. Oh, that would that would make sense. That might not be entirely correct, but that's what I because you don't get them here really. You don't no, really get key limes. You just not, sort of get yeah. regular limes here. <laughs> um, good old cla lime classic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> classic lime. Um, okay, good, good to know. Um, so the third date we get is uh chris hmm. and she is very attractive seems to be very knowledgeable kind of hits it off with fraser or seems very interested in him mm -hmm. when they go out for a date at the bar but she unfortunately unfortunately i guess yeah um is very well known among all the other male patrons by the bar yep. the exact context is a little bit like ambiguous yeah as to whether they're like former lovers or if it's just they're all interested in her as well yeah but she's very chummy with all of them she leaves fraser at the table to go and play pool with like every other male at the bar yeah um which is i mean so rude it, like, is. it is i don't care rude. how attractive you are man that that's that's not on <laughs> it is very rude i think there's a, an element of it kind of the episode sort of criticizes her for being like flirty mm -hmm. or like kind of tries to like present her as being a, an unpleasant person or like being rude to Frasier in that she's kind of being flirty with other guys. And I don't think that's necessarily true. Being flirty or like being kind of pally with men, there's something wrong with that. Yeah. It's more the fact that she just leaves him at the bar yeah. for presumably any, a while. any amount of time yeah. while she is playing several games of pool there's also a weird 
I don't know if it's intentional or not, but it's the weird, like, they're sort of, I mean, here it would be like putting your 50p on the pool table yeah. to say that you've got, like, next game. It's kind of implied that that's what all the guys are doing. They're kind yeah. of like, oh, I've got next, and they kind of put a penny down. Uh-huh. And it's, like, implying that they're sort of, like, getting, like, next dibs on Chris, uh-huh. which is weird <laughs> and a little creepy. It's, yeah... But I think that's kind of the point of the whole. Yeah, it yeah, it's definitely the, the whole, whole like, scene. Fraser is just totally out of his depth and not yeah. compatible with her because of this. But I, uh, yeah, fair enough. He he takes the initiative and and leaves. Just leaves. Well, he goes he goes to get a quarter or change from the laundromat next mm-hmm. door. Um, and who should he bump in, bump into? But Lisa, the bookstore owner, and that kind of they seem to hit it off. Yeah. and get chatting and everything and then the episode ends and the episode ends and we never see her again we never see her again yeah is she is she the bookstore owner that has the belly button piercing I was going to say presumably yes because yeah. when Fraser's having the conversation with Martin this is in the last temptation of Daphne for anyone at home not understanding what we're it's, talking yeah. about there's yeah they Fraser says like oh what is he first her is the, the dark haired temptress that works at the bookstore oh yeah and then Martin says oh Lisa he does say Lisa so presumably it, it is must the same be. one then but that also implies that he's been to that bookstore before and he says that he hasn't he says that like oh this is a nice bookstore I don't know why you dragged me here and it's like has he never been before maybe he has been before maybe he has he just doesn't like it mm. I don't know yeah either way Plot holes. Plot holes. Plot holes like Swiss cheese. Yeah. But nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Lisa is played by Bellamy Young, who was in Scandal quite recently. As were lots of people, and lots of guest stars in season nine appeared in Scandal at various points. I don't know. Enough that IMDb made a point of telling me that lots of different guest stars (laughs) appeared in Scandal. Um, But she was also in Scrubs, which is what I know her from. She had a kind of guest spot in the third season she played a surgeon she was in like i don't know if i remember it's been like a while s- since i watched scrubs it's kind of six or seven episodes all right okay um like not not a super long time and then she appeared right again right at the very end of the show hmm. where there's like the scene when he walks down the hallway and there's all the yeah, different yeah, guest yeah. stars there um she appeared in the very last episode as well very briefly there you go um yeah she's very pretty <laughs> she is she is very attractive yeah um yeah it's it's annoying episodes like these where we have these characters set up and brought in and nothing comes of it yeah um either deliberately in the case of like chris and Susanna is the character that alice and janney plays or phyllis phyllis yeah apparently she plays a character called phyllis Wikipedia said her name was Susanna. Oh. And I don't remember because I watched this episode weeks ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. We will need to... I, I, I've written down Phyllis. I think it says Phyllis on IMDb. We'll need to fact we're gonna, check We'll that. have to look that up. Maybe she was IMDb Phyllis as our guest caller role? Might have been. I wonder. I want to say it's maybe the other way around. IMDb versus Wikipedia. Who you will, continue going. Who I, will I, think, come I do top. think I know where you're going with this, and I'm interested to see what you're saying. Yeah, so like e- either intentionally getting rid of get not necessarily guests, but uh, love interests for Fraser or for Niles or Martin or whoever, um, even Daphne sometimes, um, like within the story, they deliberately get rid of them. They create conflicts and they they brush them off or unintentionally in the case of like the likes of lisa where at the end of the episode they just don't go anywhere with it they establish a connection with the character and then the rest is left the imagination either they did date and broke up before the next episode and no reference is made to it or they didn't date in which case what happened and it's kind of it's really frustrating that they they couldn't do even just like a like the fact the fact that the whole show kind of revolves around Fraser and a big part of that is his search for the perfect woman and a date i feel like there should be more of a consistent reference to that mm-hmm. 
as annoying as it can get, I feel like they could do more to tie things together. Like, if he's going on a date with someone, Martin could say, oh, hey, what happened to blah from two episodes ago? And Fraser could say, it didn't work out. She didn't like opera. Things yeah. like that. Yeah. And I know we've seen that in like the one episode that... Um, oh, it's the episode after... Uh, Donnie's bachelor party with mm. Dina, the stripper. Yeah. Is the episode after that? He starts the episode and there's a, Fraser's, yeah. go, Fraser's just been on a date and she goes off to marry... She goes. She gets married. Gets in married in Vegas. Yeah. is the one I always remember. They yeah they do that, and I think they do use the same. I don't know if it it's is not. Dina. They don't use the same name. They don't use the same name, and that's what annoys me. Yeah, because it's like you could so easily have done that, mm-hmm. and that would just give it this little bit of continuity, A little bit of tying them together. Yeah, um, and it's stuff like that that they could do here. You know, in in the next episode, you know, or or even in a couple of episodes time, they could say, oh, what ha-, like if Fraser's going on another day, it could say, oh, what happened with Lisa from the bookstore? She's got that yeah. belly piercing. Yeah. And Fraser could say, no, it didn't work out. She she died in a tragic book accident. That would be pretty bleak. Yeah. But could happen. <laughs> Crushed by the weight of her own belly piercing. That, that does happen in not a tragic book accident, but that kind of set up of killing off a partner does happen in, I think it's, it's in Seinfeld. I've never watched much Seinfeld, but I know that there is a thing where one of the characters gets engaged and then they kind of just turn around and go like, oh, she died. And they just sort of like never bring it up again. Okay. Um, Or maybe I'm wrong that they never bring it up again, but they they certainly (laughs) like kind of play it quite humorously that she just like dies suddenly and then they kind of go like, all right then and move on. Um, How joyous. Very weird. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's probably my biggest criticism of this episode, other than it not, it, it, it's just pretty bog standard. There's not really yeah. a whole lot of excitement to it, other than Alice and Janney, who's mm-hmm. a great guest. Yeah, um, I think it's a little bit of a shame that we didn't get a full episode with Alice and Janney. I know that they I, they couldn't have just stretched that segment into a full episode. That yeah, wouldn't have it makes worked. sense in context. But it's it's a, it's a shame having a, a guest star like that kind of not, we don't get the full potential of, of a full episode. Alice and Janney episode, yeah. which would have been nice. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but what can you do? Mm-hmm. How did you rank it? So I give it a three. A three? Okay. Yes. One for each blind date. No, it's actually <laughs> it's actually three for the segment with Alice and Janney and okay, zero yeah, for the other two. That's fair. Um, yeah, I think I think that it's a funny segment and it's a nice little bit. I think Roz is funny in it. I think some of the dialogue's really quite well written. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, yeah, yeah. Alice and Janney's good. I think there's a couple of bits in the first segment with Lisa and with Niles that are quite funny. There's there's jokes where Niles is kind of talking about like women that he knows and like oh maybe we could set Fraser up with such and such, and he keeps starting to describe women. And then realizing that he's talking to Daphne and then pretending that he doesn't recognize oh, them. Yeah. He sort of says, what is it? Like Daphne says like, oh, my friend Jane with the, the perky breasts. And Niles goes, oh, I wouldn't really say they were perky so much as, um, no, I don't remember Jane. Which yeah, one's Jane? <laughs> yeah. and, and, like the way he does that is really funny. And then he says like, oh, Lisa, oh, she's gorgeous. She had these gorgeous, um, no, I would need to check my notes. As, um, yeah. It's really funny. Like the way he, the way he does that. And then he, as he's kind of going around the bookshop and he has a he has a book called the heroes of nascar and he pronounces it heroes of nascar nascar <laughs> and thinks it's like because he's obviously not reading it and yeah. he thinks that it's like a roman epic or something. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah which is it's very funny yeah and then yeah it's the yeah the bit with chris i just don't think is particularly like it's 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 not so much that I think it's offensive. I just don't think it really does anything interesting, and also it's, a bit strange. it's weird. It's, yeah, um, it feels a little bit like they're kind of condemning the character because she's a bit of a flirt, which mm-hmm. is unpleasant. And you shouldn't. Do yeah, that. I know what you mean. It, it, um, it, it does certainly give that impression. Like she is being rude to Fraser, but also it feels like they're being a bit kind of puritanical of like, oh, how dare this woman have flirtations with multiple men? And it's like, yeah. well, you know, just let her live her damn life. Um, <laughs> but you do, you girl. Yeah. So yeah, it's a three. It kind of falls in the middle. Three. Yeah, I I give it a two. I was a mm. little bit more harsh. Um, 
I think it's largely the same reasons as you, but it just doesn't really gel well, to be honest. It's just not particularly interesting. It it doesn't go it doesn't lead anywhere. Yeah. Which I always find very frustrating. I've made my thoughts on that clear. Yeah. Um we it makes sense that we have these three different stories, but when the three different stories aren't as balanced as enjo- and as enjoyable as one in particular, it just makes the whole episode feel a bit off kilter. Mm. When we've got Alice and Janney in her, her sequence is amazing. The other two are a bit more boring and yeah. uninteresting. And that just makes the episode feel very uneven. So I don't enjoy that. Um, and yeah, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't do a lot for me, to be mm. honest. I, I think it could, could have been so much more. It could have been. Yeah. I think you've, you've got an opportunity for potentially getting like three really good guest stars in. Mm-hmm you've got you can do a kind of rapid fire like i know it is it is frustrating having episodes that are just oh fraser has a date with a gorgeous woman and then he bungles it yeah (laughs) it gets frustrating but like you've got an opportunity where you can just kind of do that rapid fire like three times you don't have to have all the setup you don't have to have all whatever you can just get straight into like the funniest parts of those episodes Mm -hmm. and do them you know one after the other you can get three like i say three really strong guest stars in which they don't they don't really do i mean bellamy young is pretty good alice and janney is definitely the the highlight in that mm. department i didn't even write down the actress that played chris i did i did check her page on imdb unfortunately she wasn't really in much else yeah. um but like yeah you could have gotten in three like really big names and made a big thing of it mm-hmm. um and they instead they kind of just do like a couple of generic sort of sitcom bits and then one quite strong segment Mm -hmm. yeah ah well you can't win them all you can't um at least we get one good segment out of it we do suppose right rounding off the disc we have war of the words um there's a spelling bee a national spelling bee Mm -hmm. and frederick fraser's son for those of you who may not remember since he was last in the show has made it to the finals um and he's he's following in Niall's footstep, who was once a keen speller. Uh, what do they what do they say? Something of the bee. The glitz and the glamour. No, the it says uh, does he not call himself like a king of the bee? I can't I remember what he so. said. It, no, maybe not. Maybe I imagine that. Maybe, yeah, maybe I'm thinking of when he says, "Don't get blinded by the glitz and glamour of the bee." Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're practicing so fraser and martin and niles are helping freddie practice for the b um and and uh, eddie as well mm-hmm. <laughs> eddie eddie crane from seattle your word is woof <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah and freddie's doing very well and fraser's training him and and freddie wants to win i think that's quite important mm-hmm. i think as got a little bit of a tangent here but i think there's so often you get episodes like this where it's the the parent is like coaching the son or the child um and they're kind of imposing their rule yeah on the child and fraser martin calls fraser out on this and fraser rightly kind of owns up to it and says oh maybe i am maybe i'm pushing him too hard freddie look we can go easier if you want and he says no I want to win. Yeah. <laughs> and he he's puts himself back in it. And it's a really little thing and it's not really relevant in the grand context of the story, but I really like that. Mm-hmm. I like that they kind of added that in that it's like it's important to both of them that that they want to win. They want to do well. Um yeah, sorry, that was a little bit of a tangent and not really that important, but anyway. Um so they go, they go to the the national spelling bee. They're up against a, a couple of a, a couple of other um, clearly very well coached kids, and Freddie wins. Hmm. He beats is it Warren? I think his name is yeah, um, Warren Clayton, if memory serves right. Mm-hmm. Um, Freddie wins, and he gets the trophy, and they go home, and they all celebrate, and the efficient i don't what the the yeah the guy that runs the the whatever um comes by and unfortunately has to take freddie's trophy away 
because mm-hmm. he, he has been caught cheating on tape as Warren's father was forcing him to watch <laughs> yeah. play. Oh, man. Which is so poor, cruel. Poor Warren. And, well, I... Kids seem really, to be he's a clearly a, a bit of a dick, but all... <laughs> I mean, yeah. All, yeah Don't you just hate it when kids are dicks? <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> um, and <laughs> I, just... <laughs> I just remembered the line when <laughs> when the uh, the efficient judge comes in. And he says, uh, "There, there had been an accusation of cheating," and Martin turns around and says, "Not the Asian kid." <laughs> <laughs> and everyone kind of turns around and looks at him like. I said, not the Asian kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do love that Martin being a little bit, a little bit racist, pretty, pretty racist. Um, like, and then there's the kind of misunderstanding when Fraser's talking about the e- etymology of some of the words, and he says, "So far, all of the sneaky ones have had Greek oh. roots." <laughs> and Martin says, "Like, oh, so it's fine for you to stereotype." Yeah, um, yeah, that's uh, that is that's a good line. Um, but yeah, Fraser was was caught on tape mouthing along. At the same time, it is mm-hmm. important to note as Freddie was spelling the word, and he tries to justify it, and he says like, "Look, I was the same as like singing along at a concert." Mm-hmm. And to be fair, he's not wrong. Yeah, as long as he wasn't doing it before. Um, but the the video doesn't really show that, and they've made their decision, and the the championship trophy is going to Warren instead. So. Freddie takes some time and has to come to terms with it and he speaks to Niles and Niles gives him he imparts some wisdom onto him about why he he gave up the the glitz and glamour mm-hmm. um and he and Freddie and Fraser go to the the is it award ceremony or the, just the the spellabration oh the sp- <laughs> Is that what they call it? Or is that what you just said? No, they call it a spellabration. Do they call it a spellabration? They call it the, the annual spellabration. Oh my god, that's so lame. Um, I love it. <laughs> well, they call it they call it something else because it, it's um, it's not like the winner's. It dinner was supposed or to. It was supposed to be like in honor of the winner, and then they they kind of say like, oh, because they don't say because someone was accused of cheating, but they say because of what has happened. Yeah, where it's in honor of all of the. Oh, maybe that's what. Yeah, maybe that's and they what kind of they sort of re phrase it a little and yeah, yeah he calls it a spell abrasion <laughs> and then niall says it as well when they start when freddie and warren start arguing um niall says like oh but we can all come out of this with our dignity intact and we can all we've all learned to spell and wouldn't that make this the greatest spell abrasion of all <laughs> yeah niall's is definitely playing the uh the uh the the, the middle guy what are they called again? The middle, the middle guy, the voice of reason. I yeah, there's a word for it. That what do you the, call, what do you call it when you're trying to appease both sides? Like uh, um, a mediator. Me, me, uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't think that's the word I was thinking of, but magistrate. Uh, that's definitely not the word I was thinking <laughs> of. I'm not that smart. I don't use big words like wizard. Latent. <laughs> Latent. <laughs> um. um yeah, so, but yeah, the, the, as you said, the Freddie and Warren start, they get into a bit of a scrap in the bathroom and then end up taking the fight outside and have and having a a spell off, mm-hmm. a backstreet alleyway spell off. Yeah. Street rules. And uh, they almost, they almost back out when Niles tries to, um, yeah, calm the situation down until Warren's father um, <laughs> pushes, pushes the wrong button. Yeah. Saying what well, as it says, don't need to worry about him, son. They'll probably end up at a public school. Mm. And the three crane boys turn around at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Can you take him? Yeah. Then spell his ass off. <laughs> I do love that line. It's such a good oh, line. Man. It's such a good line. Um and yeah, with post credits, we see that Freddie has reclaimed the trophy mm-hmm. and has won. It's um it's, it's a really good episode. It's really fun. I think I, it's a good episode. It's a really unique premise as well. We get mm-hmm. a bit of change of scenery. We've got I like that we have Freddy at the front and center. Yeah. And this is one of the first episodes where we actually get the plot is surrounding him. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the other episodes he's part of the plot and him being in Seattle or or them visiting him 
are are the reason for the plot yeah but he's not kind of front and center mm-hmm. this is the first episode we get where he's taking the main stage yeah quite literally he is mm-hmm. the one up on the on the b yes um and some of yeah some of the dialogue in this as well some of the jokes surrounding the spelling bee are so funny niles his sort of uh sage like wisdom as the at the start of the episode as he just sort of stands back and observes is so funny and <laughs> i i really love it i think it's a really great episode um yeah yeah it is what do you think i think <laughs> i think it is also a very very good episode um yeah i gave it a four four okay um because it's i think it's a pretty it's a, it's a very strong it's a strong plot and it's a great premise and i think the setup of it being that kind of it, it it's like it, for some reason the thing that's coming into my head is is like a pokemon battle it's like that like you've got like the big kind of stadium dynamic of like like these plots where you've got like oh it's a big dramatic it's the f- finale or it's like a final of some big competition mm-hmm. and everyone's sort of pitted against each other but it's like fraserized <laughs> and it's it's a spelling bee yeah and everyone's wearing blazers and arguing about public schools <laughs> they wear blazers in pokemon do they not? um i don't know probably they'll go to private schools <laughs> yeah private pokemon schools <laughs> um uh yeah and i and i like that i think that's i think it's a fun setup i really like frederick and niles together because mm-hmm. we never really see that much of them like we get a few odd bonding we, we get a little bit but like it really seems like this this is the closest we get where the whole episode yeah. is like kind of about their relationship like freddie is in a lot of ways taking after niles and mm-hmm. he has the gift the spelling gift <laughs> yeah yeah and um they just them kind of talking in the kitchen and yeah it's very over dramatic it's like he's supposed to be like mr miyagi or something <laughs> yeah. you know, but it's it's really nice to seeing them seeing them bond and talk to each other and yeah can you spell sweet. wax on <laughs> can wax you spell off? wax off yeah <laughs> can, can you spell miyagi <laughs> it's probably the difficult one i don't know if i can to be honest um no i i i agree actually i give it the same ranking i gave it a four as well i think it's a i just, I just really repeating what you said but yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's a great premise it's a really kind of unique and fun plot i like that we get this variation on the um sort of yeah the variation on like a competition where it's he did win and then got it taken away from him yeah and the remainder of the episode is him kind of dealing with that and and eventually reclaiming the title um whereas you know other other similar episodes in other shows might have done it where the whole episode is the build up to the finale and then it's kind of like oh will he win will he lose and then either he would lose at the end and would accept it or he would win at the end and that would be that this is very much the competition's out of the way quite quickly he wins it and then we get the the, the aftermath of that mm-hmm. which is a bit more unique it's just a kind of a different take on on what can happen at these kind of events yeah um so i like it I like it a lot mm-hmm yeah good well that's disc three that's disc three yep there's a guest star at the end of war of the words oh yes or not at the end I think, I, think to... it's, I think it's maybe near it must be near the beginning um lillian who is voiced by naomi judd who i have to admit is someone that i hadn't heard of but it was a, a mother daughter country music duo called the judds and naomi judd was the mother of the she was the elder judd related to judd nelson no not related to judd nelson oh that's a shame is it? Isn't Judd Nelson a bit of a dick? Naomi Judd Nelson. Naomi Judd Nelson. I have no idea. I know him from Breakfast Club. Yeah. And that is literally it. Mm. Well, there you go. There we go. Yeah. There we go indeed. Another episode in the bank. Mm. Would you like to give me your highlight? Oh, man. I don't know. If I you have any. To. I, I don't I don't necessarily have any. Um, Michael Keaton. It is probably it probably is that probably is the thing that I I like most about the episode. Um, I really like in in Juvenalia, right at the end before Fraser and uh, before Fraser and Kirby go off to have their cheeseburger or some such. Um, Kirby is very overexcited 
and he he comes in and he's he says i don't even know if i can do it justice but he kind of says like oh they were all like we're gonna get this old dude and then you were like old dude safe what and then like he's just like very like exaggerated and starts making like sound effects what, and, bam. Yeah. yeah keeps going for it that's really funny that's probably my highlight for the disc oh that's really annoying because was that going to be yours well sort of my 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 highlight was going to be just kirby just kirby in general yeah kirby coming back um uh, yeah, no, I love it as well. I think I think he's really great in this episode, and in particular his the, the last scene where they go off, where they go off to get their cheeseburger or some such. Mm-hmm. And I just I love his little character arc. I know it's not, it is a satisfying conclusion, but I would have liked to see more of him. Yeah, if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. it's slightly unsatisfying in that aspect. Yeah, but I like how far he's come from the first scene we got with him where Fraser was so frustrated with him being unable to learn the uh, the president's names and learn his history and everything to hear where Kirby's got his back. He's gone out of his way, gone to a lot of effort to get information to help him out when he's in need. And I just love that little that little journey mm-hmm. the of of two unlikely friends. Yeah. Um so uh, yeah. Yeah, we start. We see his potential at the end of Juvenalia. We do. Oh, he's kind of. He's he's clearly a, a journalist. Bit, a bit quick. <laughs> a journalist. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it would have been nice to see him. And maybe just like one one or two more episodes. Maybe yeah. if they did like an episode in season ten, another in season eleven, where they've got they they like they show him like doing something. Starts working at Nervosa. Right, yeah, something like that. Could, you, would be you, could, fun. you could, you could do something with that. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, and instead they make Gertrude start working at Nervosa. That's just spoilers. weird. Spoilers. Yeah. We've already mentioned that she's here for we have, season. Yeah, I know. Half, yeah, but yeah, and it's not like there's anything important. Ha- well, no, there is kind of. Not really. Not hugely. Yeah. Not really, but yeah. Okay, well, there you go, Kirby. I think Kirby was my highlight last disc, or maybe the <laughs> first disc. I can't remember. Reasonable, Can't go wrong with Kirby. Reasonable thing to do. Love Kirby. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. Um. Let's hope that neither of us get ill. Yes. <laughs> and we can continue. We can get this episode out, and then we can continue to um. Keep it on a weekly keep basis. Going. Yes, we'll get back on back on track. Back on. Track. And then end of season nine, next week. End of season nine next week. Then we'll be. The two seasons left that's not that's, that's not, not a lot at all that's not many we also need to come up with some ideas for bonus episodes we do we'll need to get one if you our lovely listeners have any suggestions mm-hmm. feel free to fire them our way because mm-hmm. we're fresh out of ideas <laughs> we've not tried anything <laughs> <laughs> was it we've tried nothing we've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas <laughs> to be fair we've had a lot of ideas we've done what eight of them mm-hmm. now plenty of ideas we've just done them all <laughs> yeah <laughs> to come up with more <laughs> okay well that's us for another week have a great day everyone good mental health and thank you for listening this has been a happy brothers podcast make sure to follow us on twitter and instagram at happy bros pod All opinions are our own, and as always, special thanks to Leo O'Donnell for the show's artwork.